What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another ranking video since I just wrapped up the Christopher Nolan Marathon. It is time for me to rank all 10 of Christopher Nolan's films from the worst to the best. Let's get started. So Christopher Nolan is one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. He's one of the most ambitious storytellers to ever hit the big screen in the 21st century. All of his films are among the best movies in recent memory. And there is no bad movie on this list. Even movies that are at the bottom of my list are still movies I really, really admire. So this was a difficult list to compile. But here it is, my top 10 Christopher Nolan films. If you disagree with my list, that's fine. It's just my personal opinion, and these are my personal favorite Christopher Nolan films. What I ask you to do right now is to share your thoughts on Christopher Nolan's filmography. Which are your favorites? Which are your least favorite? I know he's divisive for some people, but I think Nolan's among the greatest filmmakers working today because of his craft to preserving the art of cinema. So here we go, my top 10 Christopher Nolan films. Coming in at number 10 is Following. Now, Following is an interesting film. It was his directing debut, released back in 1998, on a budget of $6,000. You think that would be a lousy movie, right? No, he actually still made a pretty solid film, even on with little to no budget and no real actors on this film. He just picked his best friends and cast them in the film. Even his dad was cast in this film, which was really cool. And his dad went on to make cameos in some of his bigger films, like he's in the Dark Knight trilogy. But back to Following, it's a solid movie, and there's there's a lot more issues in Following compared to his bigger films, uh, one of which is a nonlinear structure in this film. As much as I enjoy the ambition of the storytelling, and it has some intriguing themes in there about obsession and stalking, because it was shot in black and white, the nonlinear structure did make it a little hard to follow. And even with it being a shorter movie compared to his other films, I thought the middle act was a little slow, but I was still engaged throughout most of the storytelling. You got to see the beginnings of the tropes that made Nolan such a fascinating director. And it still has a solid twist in there, but it's but there's got to be a least favorite Nolan film. So that's why following is at number 10. Coming in at number 9 is Insomnia. Now, 9 on up are all 5 star movies. And Insomnia is, like I said, an excellent film. In fact, I would argue that Insomnia is Nolan's most underrated film. Nobody talks about it. It's a really awesome, chilling psychological detective thriller that focuses on insomnia, the lack of sleep, and past regrets. And it's all done in Nolan's signature style. Maybe not as polished as the movies higher up on this list, but what makes it work are the performances and the themes. No one was able to craft top-notch performances from Hilary Swank and especially Al Pacino and especially the late Robin Williams. Robin Williams is unhinged in this film. And I wish he played more roles like he did in Insomnia because Williams creeped me out in this film. He was crazy. Coming in at number eight, eight and seven were hard because I love these films equally, but it had to be on this list because I feel like some of the other films are just a little bit better, but my number eight is The Dark Knight Rises. Now, The Dark Knight Rises gets some flack. Some people thought it was a major step down, especially coming off The Dark Knight. But if you saw my review of Dark Knight Rises, you know I love this movie. The fact that it's the weakest in the trilogy doesn't mean I hate the film. It just I do have some narrative nitpicks with this film compared to the other two. But even with the narrative nitpicks, and some of them take me out of the film just a little bit. But it doesn't detract the experience and the ambitions Nolan had in mind. 
I thought he did a great job of making a character-driven sequel. And I thought this film actually was Christian Bale's best performance as Bruce Wayne and Batman. Playing a more broken Bruce Wayne, struggling to come out of the light and be the Batman that Gotham wants him to be. And I thought... His arc in this film was just excellent. Seeing him continually struggle and struggle until he, when he finally comes out of that pit. And it's just incredible action stuff in the last hour. We also got Tom Hardy as Bane, who is just excellent and scary. And one of the best Batman villains we've ever had. And Anne Hathaway is really good as well. Coming in at number seven is Batman Begins. Just because I have Batman Begins low on my list... Again, does not mean it's a bad film, but I had to put it on the list because I personally find the other films just somewhat better. Batman Begins, in my opinion, is the best origin story we've ever had in a comic book film. No one's commitment to bringing the character out of the the out of the shadows again, especially coming after the disaster that was Batman and Robin was a daunting task, but he pulled it off, grounding the character in realism, crafting a very compelling origin story, and just showing the world just how awesome of a character Batman truly is without diving into camp. Batman Begins is awesome. My only nitpick is Katie Holmes, I thought was a miscast, but other than that, Excellent film. Coming in at number six is probably his most controversial film, and that is Interstellar. Every time I watch Interstellar, the more and more I love it. Uh, not that I hated Interstellar. I was a fan of Interstellar when I first saw it in theaters. But just the ambition of this film is just off the walls. I just love his commitment to cinema, and here he is yet again with Kind of a love letter to Stanley Kubrick in a way. Like, there's a lot of 2001 A Space Odyssey in this film, but he does it in such a clever, creative, and unique way. You have this amazing cast in this film. Probably my favorite performance I've seen out of Matthew McConaughey, who's awesome in this. The movie is visually stunning. Just the themes in this are so ambitious. And while it is exposition heavy, since I'm not a science guy, I feel like it had to be overly explained so I can at least get the gist. And I even enjoyed the final twist of this film. The final twist I thought was very interesting and I thought it helped overall with the overall themes of the film. So I thought Interstellar was great. At number five we have Dunkirk, the very ambitious war epic. A movie that on paper, it could have been a disaster as there's no characters to latch onto. And again, it does have a nonlinear structure, which could have been really confusing for a war film. But Nolan took all that to his advantage. His focus was on showing the spectacle of the action at Dunkirk, the tragedy that happened with a lot of these men, and the heroism in order to save as many soldiers as possible. And I thought the movie was just excellent. The realism of this movie was off the walls yet again. It has one of the most creative Hans Zimmer scores. And it still had a really good cast considering there's not much actual character development in this. Dunkirk, Christopher Nolan went all out on Dunkirk bringing out real planes and ships from the actual battle just to make it as real as possible. I just love the craft in this movie, and it's among the finest war films I have ever seen. Coming in at number four is Memento. Memento is crazy good. A brilliant premise of telling the whole story backwards. And while it seems weird on paper, because the character is an amnesiac, it makes sense to have the movie backtrack to the beginning because the movie just builds and builds and builds and when you think you know everything the film constantly throws you in for a loop and by the time you get to the end or the beginning because the movie throws you in for a loop it makes you rethink the whole movie again and again and again and yes this movie is so confusing I still haven't processed all the film but that's what makes the film brilliant I think Christopher Nolan knew what he was doing 
and I thought it was a very ambitious film with an amazing lead performance from Guy Pearce who carries it all the way through. Memento is awesome. I can't wait to revisit this film and try to pick up more pieces because that's what Nolan does best. And number three is Inception. I think this is Nolan's most creative film yet. Uh, the world building of Inception is incredible. Uh, I love the visual style of this film. It has one of Nolan's best casts to date with DiCaprio and Ellen Page, Tom Hardy, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Michael Caine, uh, among many more. I just think this movie shows Nolan's creativity as a director. The fact that he's able to make an artsy story while making it an action blockbuster at the same time without sacrificing either just shows his brilliance as a director and I always love revisiting Inception to pick up more pieces that I missed in previous viewings and this is one of those films that gets better and better on rewatch and again you have that really divisive ending that's never been explained and it will never be explained and I love it. <laughs> it's fun dissecting that ending. At number two, my pick for the best superhero film of all time, The Dark Knight. What hasn't been said about The Dark Knight that hasn't been said already? It's an incredible film. It's the best film in the Dark Knight trilogy. What holds the film together, of course, is Heath Ledger's iconic performance as a Joker. But Batman is great as well. Christian Bale. I love the dynamic between hero and villain. And even... The setup of the hero trying to come out of ashes but falling in the very end is just so compelling. And it's all around a great movie with incredible action scenes, enriching drama, relevant social commentary, all around a fantastic film. As much as I love Avengers Endgame, I don't think anything can top The Dark Knight and Nolan's ambitions. It's phenomenal. But my number one Christopher Nolan movie, and this might be a shock for a lot of people, but I think it's Nolan's best film yet, and that is The Prestige. What? The Prestige? What about The Dark Knight? You think the, why is The Prestige better than The Dark Knight, you crazy, 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 crazy person? The reason why I think The Prestige is better than The Dark Knight is because of the filmmaking in general and the fact that it has such an enriching cast that make the film so endlessly captivating and endlessly rewatchable because of the artistry of this film. You got actors that excel in their roles. You got Hugh Jackman, Christian Bale, Scarlett Johansson, Michael Caine, Andy Serkis, and David Bowie, all giving excellent performances. The setup of this film is great with the rival magicians competing and obsessing with one another. This is easily the most obsessive Nolan film to date. And the craziest thing is the movie shows the twist of the film in the opening minutes, yet you forget about it because you're enriched by the magic of the film that when you get to the twist that's revealed at the end, you forget about the twist being seen in the opening and it makes you all the more dumbfounded that you missed it, but it makes it more interesting to rewatch it to see the film in different perspectives. It's like no one saw the twist of The Sixth Sense, one up The Sixth Sense by 11, and just crafted a genius film that just more and more people need to watch. It's easily no one's most overlooked film. And I just love it. It's it's easily the best Christopher Nolan film, in my opinion. That wraps yeah. up my ranking of Christopher Nolan's filmography. Obviously, I'll update this list again when I see more Nolan films. I can't wait to see Tenet next year. The spy thriller, which already has John David Washington and Robert Pattinson and Michael Caine and Kenneth Branagh, among others, in the cast list, I think is going to be awesome. I can't wait to check that film out. But like I said, if you've seen all of Nolan's films and would like to share your thoughts down below, definitely do so in the comments below. Share me your rankings, which are your favorite, which are your least favorite. But please be civil and respectful in the comments below. I have never seen the same ranking twice, and that's the fun of it. You get to share your favorite Nolan films in the comments below. If you enjoyed this ranking, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. 
If this is your first video, besides ranking videos, I also do movie reviews, TV reviews, trailer reactions, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!